introduce Pete Martin now. Pete comes from Gloucester Skates, the Badger, Badger Shooting Gaps. Um, Pete has been very active in Gloucestershire, and I'm going to hand over to him straight away. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thanks everybody for coming today. Seems a bit weird that everyone's over there and not in front, but uh, if you can all hear, that's great. Um, uh, unlike one of the previous speakers, I am just going to freeform this because I've done many of these things before and Emma and the last speaker covered just about everything that I think we're all concerned about, um, about the Badger Cull, its legality and the way that the politics and the truth are being massaged uh, in the interests of a tiny minority of uh, people who dwell in the countryside who just want to kill things. Anyway, for those who don't know, um, GAPS or Gloucestershire Against Badger Shooting, uh, we're the uh, people who set up the Wounded Badger Patrols. We actually set them up a year before the cull started because we thought the cull was going to happen the year before, but if you remember, it got cancelled. And that year allowed us to make uh, a lot of preparations um, together with our, our friends in the uh, SAB groups. Um, give them a big hand, by the way, for the SAB. <laughs> together with them, we, we are able to identify and map all the sets that were then, again, were then going to be monitored during the cull and work out where the footpaths were uh, and all that kind of thing. During the cull, um, because we're all actually quite intelligent and some of us are very professional, uh, including my good lady wife who's a chartered surveyor, we started to uh, work out where footpaths had been blocked deliberately or through neglect. Uh, we made contact with the county council to ensure that they were open. Um, and we started to monitor what was going on during the cull, particularly our contacts with the police. Um, now that the cull is over, one of the things that we are doing is we have a police liaison team, and they are going through a list of crimes that happened during the cull, none of which were committed by you or anyone like you, but which were committed by the cullers and their supporters. And we have a list, a specimen list in with them at the moment of five firearms offences which are very serious. We don't want people wandering around our countryside who do not know how to use firearms safely, particularly around public footpaths. We have over 25 incidents of intimidation and violence against colours which are being pursued. Um, there are named individuals, uh, we put out a press release yesterday um, covering a very serious case in uh, where uh, a member of the NFU, chairman of the NFU, Simon Payne, uh, he's the chairman of the Bristol branch, um, drove down a footpath during one of the culls, ran into one of our um, patrollers, injuring them, um, and when the ambulance was called and the police were called, um, the, the driver, Simon Payne, was seen laughing and joking with the police commander for that evening and he was led off with a pen notice rather than being done for driving without due care and attention. These are issues that are very, very concerning. We have a number of very serious issues of police failures during the cull which are based around their idea that all of you were evil, wrongdoing scum and that all of the colours were doing their lawful business. Now, in fact, the opposite is true, and we are taking that up with them, we're also taking it up with the Home Office, and we are pushing on your behalf, so that if the cull comes back, there will be a very, very different reaction from the police in the cull zone, and a very different reaction uh, and set of behaviours from the colours. Um, we're also um, very plumbed into the whole Team Badger setup, and we are also concerned about the legal challenge that will come if they announce the cull again. Um, I, I'd like to highlight an issue that's troubled me for a long time, because if you look at the Protection of Badgers Act, they can only issue a license to cull badgers um, in order to prevent the spread of disease. Now, if you don't know whether the badgers you're killing actually have a disease, then that would be an offence under the Protection of Badgers Act 1992. Yeah. Equally, since we joined the European Union all those years ago, 1970-something, a legal concept which is very strong in Europe and which has become strong for us too is the legal concept of proportionality. Now that sounds a bit technical, 
But essentially what it says is if you make a law or you, or you allow something, it has to be proportional to the problem that you're trying to solve. Now, killing 70% of badgers when you know only 1.7% of them actually have TB is not proportional. That would make it illegal. So, that's a, another example of the kind of clever things that we're, we're, we're trying to do on your behalf. Equally, if the call starts again, we will be out in force again in our tabards. Our numbers are, are rising all the time. We're getting new recruits and we will carry on doing what we did before. And it succeeded. I don't think, um, it's very easy to get depressed sometimes. A couple of days ago I was a bit depressed about it. I thought, are we really winning? The, the truth is, yes we are. Um, we've had a contact recently from um, our, uh, the Team Badger, sort of, there's a kind of group phone call that happens every so often. We were all expecting the cult to be reannounced, or the, the, the commencing of the cult to happen, the announcement of that to happen on Thursday, but it didn't happen. And the word back is that there's an almighty row going on behind closed doors in Westminster. <laughs> and we, we have caused that row. Because you, you can delay the truth coming out, but you can never hide from it. It always comes out in the end. And we, as a group, we have shone a light on the activities of this government and the colours, and we're now starting to shine a light on farming in this country. And that's something else I think that we need to get a grip of. Yeah. We, we have a situation here where farmers are now starting to split. If you go on the Bovine TV website, there are a couple of very interesting articles by farmers who are expressing how annoyed they are because they don't have TV, and yet many of their neighbours do. Now, I've discovered, and I, don't, I haven't been able to verify its accuracy, but I have read it somewhere that 40% of farms in the TV hotspots don't have TB. Okay, why is that? This, the, the reason is because there's a difference between good farming practices and bad farming practices. And I think now the good farmers are realising that the cull has caused a disaster, not only for their reputation, but it isn't working, it's too expensive. And what they've realised is they're actually getting TB from their neighbours. And they're getting TB from their, their neighbouring farms that aren't doing their testing on time, that don't take their biosecurity seriously, and that, they don't, uh, that they're importing cattle because their, their own herds are not self-supporting. It, it's quite shocking, really. Only less than 1%, a lot less than 1% of cows actually die of TB. A far higher percentage of cows die of lameness, mastitis. You know, they are killed because they can't give birth. I mean, imagine if we did that to humans. I'm sorry, madam, you can't give birth, we're going to kill you. Wouldn't really watch, would it? So these farmers have realised that they can't then produce enough cows and calves every year, so they are importing them by the hundreds of thousands from areas where they haven't been tested. And then they are moving them around. And then there are funny little anomalies in the farming uh, regulations which say if you have a farm in Devon and a farm in Northumbria, it's considered to be the same farm. So you're not prevented from moving your Devon cows to Northumbria. Now that's something the government could snap away in an instant. It's the stroke of a pen. That regulation should be changed now. Equally, why do farmers, when they can't sell a batch of milk, spread it out on the land yes. without pasteurising yes. it? Because if they've got TB, and for whatever reason they can't sell that milk, if they then spread it back on the fields, they are spreading TB all over the fields. Now, I don't know if it's a funny time of year um, today, but last night I went out to my own patch of ground and with a torch to let the dogs out, and I noticed that all the worms were up in the wet. Yeah. Now, it, it might be one of those things where the worms are, are breeding, I don't know, but there were literally hundreds of them in our small patch of ground up, wriggling around, and I thought, well, imagine if we just sprayed TB-infected milk all yeah, over that. Because yeah, yeah. what do badgers eat? Worms. You know, it's quite clear that badgers are getting TB yeah. from the farming industry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I wasn't planning to go on too long, so I'll kind of wrap up. Um, but yeah, we, we are um, in this kind of limbo now, waiting for it. But we need to keep up waiting for the decision. We need to keep up, um, because we are winning this war of words and this war of ideas. I, I did go to the 
the Westminster um, rally, and I, I actually went to see the debate in the Houses of Parliament. And it is very interesting, the, the kind of flimsy lies that are still being told by politicians who support the cull. One, one Conservative MP actually said in, in the Commons, and it's in Hansard, that it was awful, wasn't it, that um, people were being forced to drink infected milk. <laughs> Well, I thought, hello, matey, we've been pasteurising milk since before you and I were even born. What are you talking about? You know, if you've got Conservative MPs who don't even know that, voting to, uh, um, you know, carry on with a cull, that's extraordinary. Equally, we've got to maintain our vigilance against the kind of insidious twisting of facts. Summing up the debate, George Eustace actually tried to claim that there was culling in the 50s and 60s when... Um, the culling of badgers when TV was, was taken down again um, from the high levels before the Second World War. Now, that is a blatant lie. What there was was an uncontrolled killing of badgers. And farmers have been doing that for centuries. But if you think about it, they were doing that when TV was high, and they were doing that when they were getting rid of TV. But I, I actually managed to meet George Eustace in the lobby of Parliament, and I buttonholed him. And I told him this. I said, that is a lie, what you've just said. It's an insidious twisting of the facts, and there's no reason why you shouldn't have known it. And I said, and if you say it again in Parliament, and I'm watching it, I will make a complaint to the Parliamentary Standards Committee for misleading Parliament. He looked quite scared, and he took it off quickly. <laughs> Well, we, we did the same thing with our own MP, who in the last debate, uh, the, the debate before that, said a whole lot of things that weren't true and then claimed he hadn't read our email. So we wrote him another letter and said, well, you've got the information now. And it, it, actually it was about crimes that had been committed by colours. And it was accompanied by a, a letter from the Chief Constable of Gloucestershire. And we said, so, if you say it again in Parliament, we're going to report you to the Parliamentary Standards Committee. <laughs> Um, the last thing I'd like to say um, is that we are at Gaps, we're having um, a badger ball if you're up in Gloucestershire, um, which is uh, £25 a ticket, but there's lots and lots of prizes in the raffle and there's an um, uh, auction of promises, and that is on Saturday the 3rd of May um, in Colford in Gloucestershire. It should be great fun, the tickets are selling quite fast, but if you're up there, it's, it's great because all the profits go uh, into our fund for um, getting some night vision optics and various other equipment for the cull. Um, also, we've got some t-shirts uh, for sale. If Tina would like to wave in the middle of the crowd, we've got a bunch of t-shirts. Again, um, they're not expensive, but the small amount of profit from those is also going towards saving our badges. So keep up the good work. We are winning this fight and see you out there.